Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be doing a comparison between three different types of solar panels. So for those of you with short attention spans, I wanted to demonstrate something right in the beginning of this video because this is something you need to know about the difference between crystalline and foldable solar panels. I go into greater depth later on in the video, but here is the quick 20 second clip. After that, I'm going to do an in-depth breakdown of the differences between these three types of panels. Let's get to it. Down to 26 watts using half the panel. Back up to 49 watts now. Now we're back at 80 watts. Cover part of it down to 30 watts. Zero watts. So a huge difference in performance uh, with the power film in that the power film can be shot to hell and it's still gonna give you power Okay, let's get serious. From left to right, we have the Powerfilm 120 Silicon Thin Film Amorphous Panel. Next, we have the Energy Lynx, which is monocrystalline. Then on the far right, we have the Energy Polycrystalline Panel. This is far and away the most expensive. This goes for between $1,300 to $2,000 USD. This goes for about $200 to $400 USD. That goes for about $140 to $200 USD. This is a silicon based solar panel. This is monocrystalline, that is polycrystalline. The efficiency of this panel is 6 to 12%. That means that 6 to 12% of the sunlight that falls on it gets converted into energy. This one is probably going to be somewhere between 15 to 20%, and that one is going to be upwards of 20% efficiency. Now, in terms of portability, this one far and away is the most portable because you can compact it. This one has full flexibility. This one has about 30 degree of flex. That one can't be flexed at all. It's rigid. It's mostly for static installations. So this one is for putting in a backpack, an expedition pack, a hiking trailer, a quad. This one is for semi-permanent installations like a truck or an RV. That one is gonna be for a static installation like on a roof or in a backyard uh, makeshift solar array. Now durability is complicated because in most dimensions this one is the most durable. So you can throw this on the ground if I was to take a giant rock which was sharp and I dropped it on this even if it punctured one of these microcells the panel itself would still function albeit at a reduced output power. If I was to do something like that with one of these because they're not wired the way this one's wired, uh, not only would they probably shatter, but they might not be redeemable after that point, unless you have a lot of engineering know-how. That said, these are gonna last a lot longer if they're left outside. So if you were to leave something like this outside, it's probably gonna degrade after a few years. Once again, this is for portable applications, so it's not going to be exposed to sunlight all the time. It's also not waterproof. Mind you, you're likely not gonna deploy something like this in conditions where there's a lot of humidity or where it's raining. These on the other hand, because it's semi-permanent or permanent, they're built to be covered with snow and get rained on and even hailed on to a certain degree. Uh, these are not. So durability is tough because this is more durable in some ways than these. But overall, I'd say it's probably a tie if you were to to talk about overall durability uh, and in terms of longevity. But once again, this is a special purpose. This is for military applications. The reason why they use this is because it is lightweight. It can be filled with bullet holes and still function. There's a video on YouTube of a guy shooting these microcells and you can see the uh, power output meter uh, drop as he fills it with, with holes. Now in terms of the power to weight ratio, the lightest weight, for the most amount of power. These are all 100, well, this is 120 watts. This is 100 watts. I couldn't find a fair comparison. Powerfilm doesn't offer a 100 watt panel, but even if you did shave off 20% of this, uh, it's still gonna be, well, it's actually gonna be a lot lighter because it's, it's lighter, but it's putting out more power. So far and away, uh, in terms of the power to weight ratio, this is the best 
option you can get. So the Powerful wins in a lot of ways, but where this one wins is that it's super lightweight, it's got a bit of flex to it, it's far more cost effective in my opinion and i think for most people who aren't you know going on long hikes going on expeditions i mean if you do uh, group hikes family hikes and you're out in the wilderness for long periods of time this would be something for you but for most people who have an rv or you want to put a solar panel on a vehicle in a cabin where say you don't want to be lugging in these big panels there's a lot more ways that you can mount something like this as opposed to that, which really does require a hard installation. So I would say this is probably the best value overall, but uh, this is the most innovative and cutting edge technology there is. Now there's one other area where the power film is superior and that's in variable and low light conditions. So you're gonna get better performance in low light conditions. That means you can use more of the day to harvest uh, energy. And it also means that if you have a smaller power film panel, you can actually put it on a backpack and it would be practical to do so because you actually would be soaking up some of that light as you walked. So if you're hiking through a forest and you know, you're under a canopy of trees, you're not getting any direct sunlight. If you tried that with one of those a smaller foldable monocrystalline panels, like the seven to 21 watt panels, you're really not gonna be getting much power at all unless the sun is right behind you and you're hiking in that direction. With this, any sunlight it's exposed to, it's collecting those, those photons from everywhere. So uh, you're gonna get much better performance like this. Also in terms of partial shading, as you can see right now, the leaves are falling, fall is here. So if 25% of the surface area of this was covered with leaves, 25% of this covered, 25% of this covered, this one would have the best performance. This, the performance is going to be proportional to the percentage of the panel which is exposed to sunlight. Whereas with this, if you were to cover a significant part of it, the output is going to drop dramatically uh, just because of the way it's wired. It's wired, I believe it's wired in a series as opposed to this being wired in parallel, meaning that if one of these cells is uh, blocked, basically impedes the flow of current throughout the whole panel. Now, in terms of uh, temperature coefficient C, that is how much is the performance of the panel gonna be impacted by high temperatures. Every degree over 25 degrees, the performance of this is gonna degrade by about a 10th of a percent. Whereas with the crystalline panels, uh, the performance is gonna degrade significantly more than that about four tenths of a percentage point for every degree over 25 degrees. So let's strap them up to the energy apex and let's see how they perform in this variable sunlight. The original polycrystalline energy panels and right on the ground it's 45 watts. So we're getting somewhat better performance with this one when it's laying flat than we were with the Lynx. Let's angle it again. Now we're getting 72 watts when at an angle towards the sun. Okay, now we're pulling 84 watts, which is pretty good. I'd say anything over 80 watts on a panel rated for 100 watts is acceptable. So we got 84 watts right now without the obstruction. If I was to obstruct a bit of this panel, it drops dramatically to 34 watts and I'm only covering a small part of the panel. Now we're back at 80 watts, cover part of it, down to 30 watts, zero watts. So a huge difference in performance uh, with the power film in that the power film can be shot to hell and it's still gonna give you power. That's why these are for rooftops and it's very important if you do have solar panels that you keep that snow off them and that you keep leaves off them or else they're just not gonna function. So that's uh, one benefit of a power film panel is that, you know, in almost any condition, it's gonna work well. Now I may have some diminished performance as a result of having all these adapters. Uh, I originally had my power film adapter intended for the purpose of using with the 
original Kodiak, which uses a Nutric adapter. So I have a power film adapter, but it's going to a Nutric, and that Nutric is being transferred to this EC8. So I'm sure that may have some negative effect on it. So we got to take that into account when assessing the efficiency of the power film here. So with the Energy Apex, it actually tells you how much sunlight you're getting. All right, so right now laying flat, we have a 45 watt charge. Let's do that same experiment where we cover part of it up, still getting a 45 watt charge. Hasn't changed. Still getting a 45 watt charge. Now let's try something else. Let's be a bit more drastic. Down to 26 watts using half the panel. Back up to 49 watts now. Now let's see if we angle this a bit, if we can collect more of that sunlight. So now we got 61 watts. You really do get what you pay for with a product like this. This is made for the military. So it's built to military specifications. I know mil spec is thrown around a lot and in some ways is a meaningless term nowadays, but this is actually built to military standard, uh, which for something like this, for an application like this, is a meaningful classification. I have a feeling that if you position this thing properly with grommets and angled it towards the sun, in spite of the fact that you have this crazy array of cords here, uh, you would get comparable performance to the crystalline panels. Now, even when partially shaded, So next we're going to try the Lynx panel. This one's going to have the advantage of being plugged directly in to the unit. Marshall, quiet. Okay, so we're getting our 50 watts right now. 42 watts. Okay, we got 76 watts. That ain't bad. So I think we've kind of capped out at 76 watts and we got the clouds coming in again, so. All right, so in terms of how these three panels performed, the polycrystalline was the most efficient. Uh, this one was secondly the most efficient. Uh, the power film, because we had the cord issue, it's hard to say if we were getting accurate readings there. Uh, it certainly performed much better when part of it was covered and performed a lot better in low light. So in a way, <laughs> they're all kind of winners because in spite of the fact that this one didn't do as good as this one, it is far more lightweight and it's flexible. So you can't have everything, unfortunately. Now in terms of low light performance or when part of it's obscured, these things, no, no. And that's nothing that's unique to the Energy brand. That's uh, any monocrystalline panel. That's just how they are. They don't work if it's uh, part of the panel is covered. If more than like 10% is covered, you're not getting any power out of it. There may be some workarounds there. Based on this test anyways, I've confirmed that uh, covering any part of these panels, it's not gonna be good. They're all good. I mean, they all serve a purpose. Uh, this one would be perfect for a vehicle installation. I'm gonna be keeping one of these in my truck in case I want to you know, put it on the roof of the truck or something like that. Uh, it's just more power in a smaller surface area as opposed to the power film. So this makes much more sense if you're in a vehicle because you don't need as much space. Mind you, you still have to angle it towards the sun if you want maximum input. So that's something to, to keep in mind that this is going to require a bit more labor, whereas this is going to be pretty much effortless. But if you do put a little bit of effort into it, that will increase the charge a little bit. I would say a significant amount, but not a make or break amount. <coughs> Baxter does not let go. <laughs> the 
The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com. We've totally revised our website, we only deal with quality products at the best prices, and all of my subscribers get a VIP discount of 10% off the entire store. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive and the prepared thrive. See you next time.